Good day everyone, I am Sir Nolito M. Domingo Jr. and today we're going to discuss the Unit 1 of Advanced Gymnastics and Physical Fitness, an introduction to physical education. But first, let us have the learning objectives. At the end of this unit, you will be able to define physical education, identify the different objectives of physical education, and value the importance of physical education. Now, we have objectives of physical education. We have physical development, emotional development, mental development, and social development. When we talk about objectives of physical education, as you can see, it shows the different aspects that we will develop because here in PE, we will not just deal or focus on the physical development of an individual, but we will also develop your emotional, mental, and social aspects. Physical education is defined in many ways. First, let us have Blumkin in 2002. It is a process through which an individual obtains optimal mental, social, and fitness skills through physical activities. We have Ravello in 1972. Physical education is education through or by means of physical activities. We have Evisa in 2007. Physical education is a planned sequential instruction that promotes lifelong physical activity. It is designed to develop basic movement skills, sports skills, and physical fitness as well as to enhance mental, social, and emotional abilities. Last one, we have Domingo in 2008. Physical education is an integral part of the education program designed to promote the optimum development of an individual physically emotionally, mentally, and socially through total body movements. All in all, we can say that physical education talks about the holistic development of an individual, meaning we are not just focusing on one specific aspect like the common misconception about PE. Because in reality, physical education also develops the student's emotional, social, and mental skills and not just the physical. Likewise, Physical education develops students' competence and confidence to take part in range of physical activities that become a central part of your life in and out of school. Now, we have importance of physical education. First one, we have improved physical fitness. With a lot of physical activities done in physical education, we will be able to become physically fit. Also, it will help an individual to develop muscular strength, flexibility, muscular endurance, body composition, and cardiovascular endurance that can be used in everyday life. Now, the question is, why is it being said that it will help us to develop those components? Let's say, for example, if we will have a look with the following units here in PE1, you will encounter different activities such as physical fitness tests, gymnastics, aerobics, tumbling, that will enhance those components I said a while ago. Meaning to say, we have a lot of different activities or topics that will address those components for us to improve. Next one, we have skill development. Nakakasunod pa tayo? Okay, now let us have skill development. This is another reason why PE is important. We will encounter different actions or activities in different topics that we don't usually do. And it helps us to develop our motor skills. Meaning it has something to do with the acquisition of skills through repetition or by means of consistent training. Why? Because skills cannot be attained or acquired instantly. It should be practiced. That is why PE offers different activities designed to develop our skills. Let's say for example, before, you are afraid to do tumbling and you can't even try to do at least once because of the correct procedure and safety guidelines discussed here in PE, you have now the courage to do so. Next one, we have self-discipline. This is the third one, okay? Self-discipline. By means of physical education or by engaging into different activities, you can develop self-discipline by learning positive attitude and behaviors. Let's say for example, I as a teacher discuss a certain guidelines or safety precautions before telling you to do a certain task. 
you as a student develop self-confidence when you follow what I had discussed, especially in our situation today. You as a student was learning in front of your screen without me by your side physically as in literally monitoring you in a face-to-face -face situation. Actually, you as a first-year student, you must develop or you must have a better discipline or a better character and a behavior. Because if we're not going to count the additional two years in your senior high school, you are supposed to be in a third-year college, right? So at your age, you must practice or actually you must have it already, the so-called self-discipline. I can still remember the time whenever my mom tells me, Anak, palagi kang magpapakabit sa, sa eskwelahan. Wag, wag mong sasagot-sagutin yung teacher mo, susundin mo palagi yung teacher mo. Wag kang pasaway doon at baka isipin ng teacher mo, eh ganyan yung tinuturo, tinuturo ko sa isa ba? Eh, diba ganyan yung mga linyahan ng mga nanay natin eh. Kaya no elementary ako, di ako nawawala sa honor kasi... Lagi kong pinagsasaing yung buong section namin, saka yung teacher namin. Pero kidding aside class, actually, this is one of the things that we must develop. Wala namang wawala actually if we will practice this one. Kasi sabi nga, di ba, our action reflects the character of our parents. With that, it would be nice if ipapakita natin na wala tayong disiplina sa sarili natin. Dahil baka isipin, hindi, ta hindi tayo dinidisiplina ng magulang natin sa bahay. Next one, we have stress reduction. In every meeting that you perform a specific tasks, and as you start learning the different activities, you may be able to forget those things na sanhi ng stress mo. Actually, with the enjoyment that you will experience here in PE, you might forget the person na nang go sa'yo. Yung pinaasa ka, sinaktan, dinurog, pinaiyak, pinaghintay, sinin so, nilike so, o yung taong pinangakuan ka ng milk tip, pero kahit yung sago, hindi mo lang dumating. Well, actually, what I'm just trying to say, or what I'm just trying to convey is that through PE, since one of the objectives of physical education is to develop your emotional aspect, you can find PE enjoyable that will lead you to at least forget those problems or kung ano man yung sanhi ng stress mo. Maybe hindi man siya pang matagalan na makalimutan mo siya, pero at least sa mga oras man lang na mga, na mga pineperform natin yung activities or yung may ginagawa tayong performance, at least nakakalimutan natin yung mga stress natin. Nakakasunod pa tayo? Okay now, let us have strengthening students' relationships. Don't be so happy kasi hindi ibig sabihin ng strengthening students' relationships ay tuturuan natin, namin kayo dito sa PE kung paano umabot ng anniversary. Well, kidding aside, as you can see, one of the importance of physical education is really strengthening students' relationships. Because here in PE, you will be engaging with different people, with your classmate to be specific. With the different activities, you still end up asking the shoulder of your classmate. E paano ang gagawin mo if yung nakasama mo is yung classmate mo na asar na asar ka dahil abot ang makeup at lip tint pero hindi naman nagpapalit ng punda ng una. Pero dahil nakasama mo siya, ang ending, kumbaga, nakasama mo siya, mas nakilala mo siya, nalaman mo na pati pala kumot, di siya naglalaba. <laughs> Joke lang. Nakasama mo siya, nakilala mo siya, and with the bonding you had with her, na-realize mo na that there is good thing inside with her. Siya pala yung magsisilbin yung leader in a certain activity or siya pala yung, yung tutulong sa'yo sa mga performance and magiging help ka rin pala sa mga bagay na hindi niya alam. In short, mula sa pagsusungitan at di pagkakaanawaan na uwi sa pagkakaibiganan. Ayun naman pala. Also, in additional, papasok ulit dito yung objectives ni physical education. Ano yun? Yun yung tinatawag nating social development. Nakakasunod pa tayo? Well, kung nasagot natin yon, ibig sabihin, nakakasunod pa rin naman siguro tayo. Now, let us have the last one, improved self-confidence and self-esteem. First, let us discuss the difference between the two. I will say it first, self-confidence and self-esteem are different. But they tend to go hand in hand. Why? It is because rarely do you have one without the other. It's like loyalty without trust or beginnings without endings. What I'm just trying to say is that they are different but they go hand in hand. Meaning magkasama talaga sila. You cannot have one without the other. Self-esteem is all about how you feel about yourself. Whereas self-confidence is the certain to you. For deeper understanding, let's have an example. Kasi baka medyo nalilito pa rin tayo. Doon tayo sa napapanahon ngayon. 
Dahil kaka-start lang ng klase, let's have election of officers as example. Let us say, ako ay na-elect as president of the class dahil ako yung maingay sa GC, ako yung nagre-raise ng question dun sa teacher. Yung kumbaga, yung question ng buong section, ako yung taga-raise dun sa may teacher. The difference between the two can be determined on how I react on the election that was made. If I have problems with self-confidence, ang unang papasok sa isip ko ay kaya ko kayang maging president. Or kaya ko kayang magsalita sa harap ng mga kaklase ko. Or kaya ko kayang ilid yung mga kaklase ko. Given the fact that wala akong experience sa pagiging presidente dahil buhat ng elementary, escort ako. <laughs> Dito lang naman sa video, pagbigyan niya na. Okay? Now if I had issues with self-esteem, ang magiging tanong ko sa sarili ko after the election ay hindi kaya sila nagkamali na inelect nila ako. Ano bang halaga ko? Ano bang meron sa akin? At ako yung pinili nila. Eh, wala nga akong experience man lamang sa paglilid. Dito papasok yung feeling na feeling ko ay niloko ko sila. Dahil kumbaga ako lang yung taga-race, ako lang yung maingay. Kumbaga bakit nila ako pinagkatiwalaan? Meaning, pag sinabi nating self-confidence, ito yung nararamdaman natin sa sarili natin. At pag sinabi nating self-esteem, ito yung katiyakan mo sa sarili mo. Kaya nga certain to you, katiyakan mo sa sarili mo. So that is the difference between the two. And here in PE, You will be able to develop those two as you engage with the different activities and become more confident as you master the different skills needed and develop your self-esteem. Let's say now you can confidently do tumbling because you know the correct procedure and guidelines or safety precautions with your head tilted or kung bakat taas na omo kaya ipagmalakay that there is nothing wrong with the tumbling that you will about to perform. Now. As we end this unit, let us assess if you truly learn our topic for today by answering this question: How physical education affects our daily lives? Again, I am Sir Nolito M. Domingo Jr. God bless everyone. Good day everyone, I am Ma'am Shara and today we are going to discuss physical fitness. Since physical fitness and physical fitness test is an important component of physical education, we cannot go deeper unless we know first about physical education. From the previous lesson, we learned that physical education is the holistic development of an individual through physical activities. We learned that it has a benefit objectives, and the different aspects it develops. For this unit, you are expected to define physical fitness, physical fitness test, and identify the different components. Also, you have to demonstrate the different physical fitness tests and identify your strengths and weaknesses by means of physical fitness tests. What is physical fitness? To mind you, you do not have to go to a fitness gym, scalp your abs, tone your arms or your legs, or even to build your muscles just to prove everybody that you are a physical fit individual. Because physical fitness is the ability of an individual to carry out tasks efficiently without do fatigue and have energy to do leisure. Thus, this is the ability of the body to do a certain task without feeling tired at the end of the day. While physical fitness test, we use the term test when we have to evaluate or assess something. So in this case, we are going to assess or evaluate a fitness level of an individual. Because physical fitness test is a special component of PE that measures a fitness level and that will allow you To know your strengths and weaknesses at kung ano ba yung dapat na sports or talent you have to pursue. Now, why do we have to learn about physical fitness and physical fitness test? Because just like physical education, it has many benefits. Some of these are to reduce the risk of disease, development of your physical fitness components that Later, we will be discussing in this unit and it boosts your energy level, relieves stress and improves appearance, improves overall health and of course, it promotes longer life. 
While in physical fitness tests, it enables you to know or determine what are your strengths and weaknesses and also your talents and potentials. Physical fitness has different components. And also, physical fitness test has different test items. So first, we have the different components for physical fitness by Fahe Insel Roth of 2011. We have two types or two sets of components under physical fitness. First one is what we call HRC or the health-related fitness components. And the second one is the performance or skills-related fitness components. What are the difference between the two? First one, we have health-related components or health-related fitness components. It deals with the physiological aspect of your human being. Physiological means the basic functions of your body. For example, we have number one, muscular strength. Anong part ang involved kay muscular strength? Of course, your muscles. Muscular strength is the ability of the muscle to exert force against resistance. So this is about the strongness of your muscle. While number two, we have muscular endurance. By simply saying, si muscular strength is the strongness of your muscle. While muscular endurance answers with the question, how long can your muscle last? Gano katagal kaya ni muscles doing a certain physical activity. Next, we have cardiorespiratory fitness. Who is cardio and who is responsible for your respiration or respiratory system? Cardiorespiratory comes from the combined words from cardio which means your heart and of course, yung bidang bida kay respiratory system which is lungs. It means that cardiorespiratory fitness is the function of your heart and your lungs as one. Now, gano ba ka importante na nagpa-function ng maganda si heart and si lungs? They produce nutrients and oxygen. Para naman kanino sila nagpo-produce ng oxygen and nutrients for the whole body. Because basically, si nutrients and oxygen is going up to the brain. Sino naman si brain sa katawan ng isang individual? To mind you, that brain is the CPU of a human body. Si brain hindi lang nag-iisip, kundi nagbibigay ng functions and the different body part of yours. Ibig sabihin, kung kulang ang naibibigay na nutrients and oxygen ni heart and ni lungs sa katawan ng tao, kulang yung marireceive ni brain and kulang din yung magiging function na maibibigay niya sa different body parts of yours. Next, we have flexibility. This is said to be the ability of the joints to move throughout the full range of movement. Basically, it is about the folding and bending of a body part to a body part or the whole body itself. For example, reaching out your foot through your head. Aabutin mo ng paa yung iyong ulo. Not everyone can do that. So, ibig sabihin, if someone is able to do that, he or she is a flexible individual. Body composition. This is about the percentage of blood, fat, muscles, and bones inside your body. Or basically, ano ba yung bumubuo sa isang human being? O ano ba yung bumubuo sa isang katawan ng tao? So that is body composition. Okay, next one we have the SRC or what we call performance or skills-related fitness components. Ito na yung sinasabi natin na sa component na to, we are able to know what are the specific sports or talent we can be participating in or we can pursue. For example, number one, we have agility. So agility is the ability to change positions, directions, movement in a quick and light movement. Number two, we have balance. 
ability to control, and maintain a position. For example, you are good in balancing. To what sports can we participate in? For example is gymnastics. Because in balance, we have two types. First one is static or in fixed position. Number two is dynamic while in moving motion. So for example, static. You are going to stand on a right foot and maintain a position. Tatayo ka lang on your right foot. You have to balance and no other movements. While in dynamic, you have to stand on your right foot and do arm circling all the way. Habang nakatayo ka and balancing, iiikot mo yung kamay mo. So you have to maintain a position while doing extra movements or other physical activities. Next, we have power. This is the ability of your muscle to release force in the shortest possible time. Yung lakas. So, this is mostly incorporated with the word force. So, basta meron tayong force, you are releasing and exerting also your power. Next, we have coordination. We use the term coordination when there are Two or more variables to coordinate. Hindi siya magiging coordination if you just only have one variable. Kaya tinawag siyang coordination ay dahil merong two or more variables to coordinate pa. This is the ability to keep harmonious functioning of muscles and producing complex movement. Not just complex movement. For example, you are going to walk. In walking, paalang ba ang ginagamit natin? Of course, no. Some of us may answer, gumagamit din tayo ng kamay. Yes, that is for the balance. We sway our hands or arms para ma-maintain yung balance habang naglalakad. Aside from your feet and your hands or arms, ano pa ang isang body part na ginagamit natin in just simply walking? Of course, your eyes. Because you are seeing the direction where you are pointing to. Kung saan ka pupunta, kailangan nakikita mo. So that is an example of coordination. The coordination among your feet, your hands or arms, and then your eyes. Next, we have speed. This is the ability to make continuous movements of the same kind in the shortest possible time. Baka nalilito tayo kay speed and agility. Basta si speed, ang pinag-uusapan natin is your ability to accomplish a particular movement within a time. While kay agility, meron tayong sinusundan o kailangan natin i-consider the changes in position, direction, and movement. Last, we have reaction time. Kay physical fitness, hindi lang batayan kung gaano kaganda ang iyong katawan para masabi na ikaw ay isang physical fit na individual. It also involves your mind alertness, your emotional expressions, and reaction. Gaano ka ba kabilis magre-respond sa isang stimuli? For example, a ball was thrown to you. The tendency ay umilag ka or to receive the ball. But suddenly, you receive the ball after such period of 15 seconds. Do you think that is normal? Of course not. So malaki ang ginagamparang role ni reaction time sa isang individual para sabihin na siya ay isang physical fit na individual. So for HRC, we have 5 components. And for SRC, we have 6 components. Under physical fitness test, we have different physical fitness test items that will measure your strength and weaknesses. First, we have general endurance test, a 3-minute step test. This will measure your cardiorespiratory fitness. Next, we have strength and endurance test by means of doing or performing curl up or standing long jump. Speed and power test is being measured by 50 meter sprint. And flexibility test is being measured by sit and reach. So while you are sitting, you have to reach a certain point. Next, anthropometric test 
by your body mass index or BMI. Anthropometric test is about the measurements of your body because from the word anthropos, which means human, and metron, which means measure. So this is about the measurements of your body. Agility test is being measured by a shuttle run. Balance test by a stork balance stand test. Coordination test is by alternate hand wall toss. And reaction time test is by a drop test. So since it is pandemic, you are not going to perform all of these test items. You are just going to perform all those are accessible and that facilities we can access at home. So how is physical fitness being measured by these different physical fitness test items? So before proceeding to the actual physical fitness test, a series of warm-up exercises must be done for your upper and lower extremities to prepare your body. And also, kindly be in a clothing that you are going to be comfortable of. Here is a sample video that you can follow for your warm-up exercise. Okay, so let's start. As I was saying before, hindi natin gagawin lahat ng test items na pinakita ko before. Ito lang mga test items na to ang iperperform natin dahil we think ito lang yung magiging accessible at your home. First, we have a 3-minute step test, a general endurance test. So you have to provide a 35cm to 45cm high bench and a stopwatch. Kung hindi available ang bench with 35 to 45 centimeters high, pumunta kayo dun sa stairway and measure if this is at least on your leg level. And it will also do. Of course, a stopwatch. Stand firmly in front of the bench and start stepping up and down once the timer starts. You have to maintain this action for 3 minutes. Kaya tinawag natin siyang 3-minute step test. And then take a 5-second pause for rest. And then start counting the pulse for 15 seconds. 
You can count your pulse either on your carotid pulse here sa neck o kaya doon sa inyong arm. It is called brachial. Next, we have curl up, a strength and endurance test. So for this test, you have to provide a mat. Kung wala tayong mat sa bahay, just make sure that the flooring is clear and clean and no hazards. Lay flat on the floor with clean and clear surface. Bend the knees 90 degrees. Arms can be forward or cross over the chest like this. Or raise on the side of the head like this. Raise the trunk and curl up until your hand touches the knees. Curl up and lay down smoothly and repeatedly. So, dahan-dahan lang. You do not have to force the action. Next, sit and reach. This is about flexibility test. So, you have to provide a tape measure to measure your range. Sit on the floor with legs stretched out and straight. With knees locked and press on the floor. Stretch your arms upward, going forward smoothly, and carefully until reaching the floor. So, do not force the action. Do not force your back. Hold the position for 2 seconds for the measurement. You can do these trials 2-3 to three times. Next, we have our anthropometric test, which we are going to get first your weight in kilograms and height in meters. Because body mass index is weight in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. So for example, an individual weighted 50 kilograms and is 1.53 meters, we will have 21.30 as measurement. Now, Look at the table on the right side. This is the value that we can follow. So, less than 18.5 is underweight, 18.6 to 24.9 is normal, and 25 to 29.9 is overweight, and more than that will be obese. So, since we have 21.35, it is in a normal range of an individual. Now we have shuttle run. This is an agility test. So for this, you have to set 10 meter apart parallel lines. Kung hindi available ang two 10 meter parallel lines, you have to consider the space at your home. Just to mind yourself na bawat o habang lumiliit, Yung pagitan dun sa dalawang parallel lines or your markers, dumadami naman yung gagawin nating touches. So to do this shuttle run, if your parallel lines or markers are ready, run back and forth between the lines, touch the lines, as fast as possible, the timer starts. Stop timer after 5 touches on each line. Score is in seconds. So dito, tinitignan natin kung gaano mo ba kabilis kayang i-accomplish these physical activities. So from running a point to a certain point. So it changes the directions. That means it is an agility test. To end this discussion, I will be leaving you set of activities to accomplish and also you have to accomplish your physical fitness test card by performing the different test items. So complete the physical fitness test card by supplying the missing and needed information. Perform the test needed to accomplish the table. Read each items and directions carefully. So that's it for Unit 2. See you in our next discussion. I am Mamshara Bergado. Stay safe.